Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our board board meeting. Can we all rise to the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commander, you call the roll. Trustee Messick is absent. Trustee Rocco? Here. Trustee Sheehan? Here. Trustee Casera? Here. Trustee Wagner? Here. President DeCipio? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, as you can see by our agenda, there's an awful lot of good things happening tonight. Um, one of the things that I'm most proud of, and I know our board is most proud of, is the appointment of one of our officers. Um, officer to the Conference joined the Grange Park Police Department on May 11, 2002. Since that time, he has been a patrol officer, an acting officer in charge, a detective, and a juvenile coordinator. As a detective, he supervised and assisted in closing two major cases a homicide in 2012, family member attacked by another family member, and a home invasion in 2013. Officer is a team player, and his attitude of whatever it takes has shown when in numerous ways, one, he has readjusted his own personal schedule on numerous occasions to meet the shortage at the department, saving overtime and saving overtime expenses. He has fixed and maintained cell doors, constructing an area in the workout room for a TV sound equipment, that can be utilized by the entire village staff. Officer completed his Bachelor of Arts degree from Governor State University in May of 2014. In addition, he is certified as a breath operator, lead homicide investigator, field training officer, overweight truck enforcement, and accident reconstruction. Not only is he dedicated, well-rounded officer that he has excelled, Tim has also dedicated father to his daughter Gabby, six years of age who attends Barndale, Barnsdale School and the kindergarten program. It is a great privilege and pleasure to promote Timothy Conway to the rank of Sergeant at our Great Park Police Department. Officer, would you please stand and come forward. Chief, would you do the honors, please? Sure. <clears throat> Tell me when I have whoever's here recognized. Uh, my father, Keith, my mother, Mary Ellen, are here. My daughter's at her spring concert tonight, so she will not be the <laughs> Okay, whoever's coming up to do that. Mr. C, go ahead and put that on and then we'll do some talk. Our services are only going forward even more in a positive way. 
we respect what the board has given us opportunity on, and I thank you, Village Management from uh, Julia, as well as Emily, thank you. Um, we couldn't be more proud, we couldn't do our job without their support, and your support as well, and I mean that. The people we work with, everybody. We're very proud to wear this patch every day, and I mean that. Congrats, Sid. Thank you. Sergeant, it's not only a privilege, Sergeant, to have you in the capacity that you have just presented with us. You've been a member of the committee for a long time. Um, it's such an honor to, to see our chief and, and our ranks move up from within. Uh, we remember our family, and you know, we're awful proud and glad that you're here. And you Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please find you find the application for Village Commission Board from Jamie Zara, who currently serves on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Previous to her tenure on the ZBA, she served on the Village's Sustainability Commission. Ms. Zora is a licensed architect and a co-founder of 845 Design Group, as well as Leadership Managing Environmental Design Accredited Professionals. Ms. Zora has her MBA from the University of Phoenix and a bachelor's degree in architectural studies from the University of Illinois in Chicago. She's also a graduate of Lions Township High School. And it is my belief that Ms. Zora's experience, expertise, and demonstrated commitment to the community makes her an ideal candidate to serve in the capacity of village trustee. At this point, I'll entertain a motion. Second. And the motion is? To appoint Jamie Zora to build a vacancy of Mario Catino as a trustee. We have a second. Amanda, call the roll. Trustee Rocco? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Cassera? Yes. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Motion passes unanimous. Amanda, will you do the honors? Raise your hand. Do you, Jamie Zora, having been duly appointed to the office of village trustee in the village of LaGrange Park in the state of Illinois, do solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the state of Illinois, and you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of LaGrange Park village trustee to the best of your ability. Thank you. 
Thank you, President DeCipio, for having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Jason Vitell. I'm the president of the Brookfield Grange Park Lions Club. Currently, our active membership boasts over 573 years of service, ranging from just half a year all the way to 51 years for one of our members. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize a couple members we have in our audience. Uh, we have uh, Ryan Ralph Kohler, who's been a long time member of Brookfield, and our past president, uh, Ryan, Ryan Phil Bachnars, who's a multi generational Brookfield Grange Park uh, member, and uh, Ryan Todd Hitzman from Hitzman Funeral Home. Same thing, multi-generational, and uh, Lion Bill Gorey, one of our newer members, and Lion Ron Manil. Uh, he's currently our vice president of membership. So uh, briefly, the Lions Club is uh, more than 1.35 million strong with over 46,000 clubs around the world. This is by far the largest service organization in the world. And one of the things we have upcoming is our centennial. Um, We've been tasked with going on into our communities and trying to find ways to make a difference. And we've worked with the parks, the libraries, our police and fire, so on and so forth. Uh, but now we come before you to propose a community service project that will hopefully revitalize and restore our urban forests. According to the Illinois Department of Agriculture, the Emerald Ash Boar Beetle first discovered in the 1990s here in North America, most likely brought over by solid packing cargo transport, um, began to first start killing trees in 2002. These insects are about the size of a penny, they're green. The adults actually eat the leaves of the ash trees, that's only minor damage. What does the major damage is the insect larva, which is laid inside what they call the cambium layer. And that disrupts the nutrient flow to the trees. And once that happens, it's pretty much done. Um, as a result, 494 of the 1,399 trees in the village of LaGrange Park have been removed since January 2012, with 822 more trees subject to future removal, leaving only 83 that were treated in time. That leaves less than 6% of the original ash tree population stock in our village. This information was provided by Brendan McLaughlin of the Public Works Department. Uh, the goal to replenish our tree stock with this diverse and high population will consist of such trees as Green Mountain Sugar Maple, Shane's Clear Pear, Red Oak, and some more whichever are available to us. The Grange Park, as you know, is part of a tree buying consortium, and uh, this helps us purchase trees more effectively. The cost to replace a tree in our village, including stumping fees from original trees, is about $450 per tree. With the estimated costs and wait times for up to 16 years to replace trees that are going to be taken away within the next year or so, uh, we would like to try and help replace those trees sooner if possible. A myriad of uh, references and uh, professional associations and governmental agencies proclaim the value of trees within communities. Trees impact everything from an individual's perspective on a walk, to how somebody's house is shaded, to ecological um, functionaries as atmospheric gas exchangers. The Society of Municipal Arborists, and here's where we get into the selling feature of this. Trees have a common influence on traffic, believe it or not, and they increase public safety consequences. They benefit, benefit property values and tax bases by increasing the real estate prices, resulting in the higher tax bases. Prospective buyers routinely rate tree communities much higher than non-tree communities. The drainage and flooding issues are also uh, eased by the absorbing of stormwater and so on and so forth with green spaces, and trees are a big part of that. Additionally, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, um, and, and where trees can also help reduce the ozone production and generation of CO2 through the conservation. Health and quality of life are increased as trees and green spaces are found to foster more active lifestyles and reduce, actually, they have studies to show that they reduce crime in neighborhoods. And finally, energy savings are found as Shade, shade reduces the cooling costs, obviously, but also in the winter time, 
it deflects the cold winds coming up against the houses, which also defrays the heating costs. So the, um, the plain truth about it is this, as the AmericanForests.org uh, says, uh, trees and urban forests are crucial to the health and quality of life in our cities. Therefore, and as I said before, to coincide with the Lions International Centennial Project, we're challenging ourselves, our neighbors, businesses, and other local organizations to help raise money to buy a minimum of 100 trees to be planted in our community. This initiative is going to begin on April 24th, which is National, National Arbor Day. All right, now the question is, what do we do? So, it was almost a year ago, I stood before you at the Brooklyn Green Park uh, Police and Fire Dinner, and I promised you that I would personally come calling and asking for your help. Here I am. Um, our success is gonna be governed by our ability to effectively communicate this to the general public. Uh, we'll do the traditional posters, as you can see here, on either side of the dais, and uh, we will try and get other municipal buildings, libraries, park district, local businesses, even the schools, to get information out there. We're gonna go so far as to ask for friend-to-friend -friend contact. Use your own network, get the word out there. So in addition to the support here tonight, and after speaking with the uh, village manager, Julia Cedillo, we talked about possibilities of cross-promoting and so on and so forth. We'll try and uh, find a functional way to possibly set up links on the website to shunt people to our website, which will give the link to the, the crowdsourcing website that will help us do this uh, work. The ways to donate once you get to that site are going to be uh, varied. You need your credit cards, Apple Pay, PayPal, and of course we'll additionally accept checks. Just make sure you have them on the line that is for the tree project so it gets the right fun. Um, upon completion of the first phase with the crowdsourcing website, the initial push is a two-month um, a two-month push by the website helping us get this word out. So that's why we're gonna start on April 24th. Over the next month, we're gonna try and reach out to our friends and neighbors and other local businesses and get everyone involved in this and be ready to go as soon as we kick it off. We will also try to keep it rolling in case people want to continue to donate funds and trees and the like. Uh, after people, uh, after we have a list of people who have donated, uh, if, at, at, if they want to be recognized, we're going to release uh, the names of people who have donated and special citations will be given out to people who actually donate for the full price of one tree or more. Um, again, it uh, launches on April 24th, and I'd like to do a special thank to Ben Wall from the Public Works Department and Julia Cedillo and Andy, and Andy Bagley from the administration. And obviously, trustees and, and Mr. President, thank you so much for allowing us to come out here. Um, at this point, are there any questions that I can answer for anyone? Uh, President Vital, I just want to thank you again and the Lions Club for coming out tonight. Um, as I mentioned to you guys earlier, um, what a worthwhile project for, for both communities. And as far as service organizations go, I think it's well known that the Lions Club has always been supportive of the French Park. And uh, hopefully you feel the same way about us to you. Um, at this time, I'd like to open up to the Board of Planning and Trustees who care to make any comments. And we'll start with Trustee Sheehan. Thank you, Mr. President. Jason, members of the club, long time you'll see. Uh, as previous uh, past president, I believe it was 95 and 96. Welcome. It's a great idea. I wish you luck, and you will be getting a check from me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Trustee Wagner. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, and I'd like to add contact with that as well. Um, excellent project. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to participate and contribute to that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Excellent project. Thank you very much for bringing it to our attention and to bring the attention of the residents of the village. Thank you. Trustee Cassera. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, again, I echo all the comments of the other board members. Uh, yes, you will get a check from me also. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that uh, you know one of the pieces on our agenda every year is uh, our coming up with funding to help uh, promote the trees and, and keep the village looking as it should. And, 
this is just a great um, opportunity for a great service organization to help out the village. So thank you very much. Thank you. Trustee Zora? As everyone else said, this is a great idea, and I'm always for everything that involves the environment and improving it. So I will also be contributing. And it's nice to see you, Jason. Nice to see you. <laughs> Mr. President, are you in sales? <laughs> <laughs> Not this week. <laughs> Thank you so much for all that you guys do for our community. Thanks again. Thank you. Julie, any comments? Yourself? Okay, next we have another presentation. This is by our community park district. And I'm pleased to introduce our new executive director of the park district, Alex Davis. And Alex, welcome. And I'm sure you've got close to the board. Uh, yes, most of so uh, nice to meet everybody. Was to have, have a bet, like I said, I'm Alex Greatest, the new executive director for Green Park District of the Grange Park, or that are known as the new Roy Wright. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for uh, giving me the time to uh, give you a little update on our Memorial Park project. The, um, currently at this time, this project is about 830 thousand uh, dollar project with the ad alternate the district will be possibly adding on uh, bringing it up to about 800 thank you uh, bringing it up to about eight hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars we do have a four hundred thousand dollars grant which is right now being frozen um, by the governor downstate and hopefully that will be released um, during this time we are still planning on doing a few things trying to get it going and then once it's going to be released it will move forward uh, currently, we have actually gone out to bid and are under contract with our contractors to start the projects. So waiting for those funds to be released. So I'll give you a quick little update. Um, start off, we have the main, one of the main uh, features is going to be a new concession stand or a new um, picnic shelter with restrooms and a little concession stand. Oh, sorry. Picnic shelter with um, restrooms and a little concession stand. See the little layouts. And this is actually the nice pretty picture of it. So this will be located right, right now where the existing um, little shelter is right now. We do plan on moving forward with that. Hopefully by next weekend, we'll have the fire department out there doing their little training exercises and it will be happy down on the 31st. So this is the area, um, just to, this is the area right now where currently the um, little building is that we'll be knocking down. I'll give you a bit over here is the library and the tennis courts are right here. The playground is going to be changed around a little bit. We're actually going to be using the same pieces we have and just kind of rearranging it to make it a bit more smoothly and adding a few more pieces. Um, some of the things that we'll have in there is a water play, our sand water play area where the kids can actually, water comes down, they can move it from one side to the other, the water goes down one place, or they can move it to go down another place, and it's a good thing for the kids to play with. We'll also have a little stream that goes down where the same thing, the kids can turn a little pump on, and then the water runs down, and then there's another one where they can turn a little thick pump that makes it, the water come out and just goes down the stream, lets the kids go in and play. Um, also have these little gates that can they just raise and lower just to have a little fun, fun water play time. And that was, this part, that is gonna be located over on this area with interactive play, there's the sand water. And then also we're gonna be having a little spray pad there and then we have pictures later on in the presentation. Uh, as I said, a couple of new pieces of playground equipment we'll be putting in some of these spinners, a little surfboard that kids can play on. And the big exciting one is this uh, rotating net. So pretty much kids can crawl inside, goes around, you can get like 12 to 15 kids in it. Um, other places that's been installed, it's been great. Hit. Also on the south picnic area, so give you a bit, this is the Grange Road right up here. As you know, the sidewalk currently goes right along um, the Grange Road. We're gonna be moving that trail in a bit. 
um, and setting this all up for to be able to have farmers markets um, and have little craft fairs and such, uh, have little um, places where they can set up power and put power outlets up here. Also have a new shelter that will be seen coming down the Grange Road, it should be like the big, big, um, big show piece. People come down so they see the parts there. We'll also be having uh, some gateways that will be coming across over on this side just to show some signs so people can walk in and know the park. Um, another ad alternate that the board has decided to move forward with is a is to regrade this sidewalk that comes down here. Currently the grade is too steep to be ADA accessible, so we're going to be regrading it and making it so um, people with disabilities can make it down safely down to the lower area and then come across the rest of the park. Over on this area, we're actually going to be putting in a bocce ball court, and that uh, bocce ball is actually the surfacing is made up of crushed oysters. Supposedly that was crushed down and made a great bocce ball court. Um, also a little beanbag area right here, and then an area for with exercise equipment. So we know that a lot of people use this use the trail system to go around and then uh, use it for exercise. This also will be some more components that can uh, that people can use. Uh, this is what that shelter up on uh, off of the Grange Road will look like. And then the gateways that I was talking about will be something like this. Of course, we'll have the Grange Park on there. Okay. Uh, the spray pad area that I was talking about before, they're going to be, they're all individually controlled. So there's a, um, or actually it's, it's one big controller, you hit the controller and the water starts spraying up, runs for about, I think it was a couple minutes and then turns off, you have to go over there again and press the button. Um, all, all done with battery powered, so there's no power going over there, change up the battery every year. So I think there are three spray pads that are coming up from the ground and then there will be water that comes up from the top. What comes down from the top. Um, the site furniture we'll have out there is pretty much using what, what you see around the rest of the, uh, the village. Use the beanbags, disgusting, so they'll actually be like concrete beanbags, you don't have to bring them out anymore, you just have the beanbags, throw them in there, get them out. And finally the bocce ball that I was talking about. So it's, I don't know exactly what color we're using at this point, but this is, you know, color just um, crushed oyster cells. So go out there and get your bocce ball set and have some fun. And with that, I will answer any questions. Alex, I just want to thank the board. Your whole improvement in Memorial Park along with the Veterans Hall um, is certainly the staple and centerpiece of our community. Um, I know that Julie and I have talked many times, and one of our visions is to bring forward to the board in the future uh, beautifying Sherwood Avenue along that stretch to make it much more attractive so that we can tail on and tag on with what you guys are doing in the park district. What is the status of the Oslo Grand Prison folks here? Currently, right now, it's just in a holding pattern. And wait, is it stays that way or they take it away? Yeah, if they take it away, um, we still, the board has not decided exactly what to do. Uh, there has been discussion that we would still move forward with the shelter, picnic shelter or something. Um, I would hate to do that. The only thing that I would, don't like about doing that is if that does happen and we lose the chance of being able to use that grant funding to be able to expand the rest of the park. Yeah, hopefully it's not going to be the way. We're in the battle too, so we'll be right there with you. Um, and being a bocce court, is that where you get crushed clams and so on? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Actually, it's, no, it is oyster shops. It is oyster shops. Okay. Any good any comments from the board? Trustee Lawton. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Now, thank you for the overview of the current stance of the plan. We're really excited. Uh, a couple questions about the shelter. Um, I'm not sure if you said this, but will that um, include uh, restroom facilities and are those secured and how is all that going to be set up first of all? Yes. So, yep, so the, with the shelter, they're going to be, like I said, that's the picnic shelter behind you. It'll hold about 12 picnic tables. Then over on this side, and this is actually facing, um, there you go, right? Okay, facing Sherwood um, is this is where the two restrooms are. Women's and men's. Not sure which is on which side. Uh, it will be locked doors. We're going to have staff go out there and 
unlock your lock um, during special events and then throughout the day. We're going to try to start off by leaving them unlocked during the day. If we start getting vandalism in there, then we might end up having to uh, change up our schedule. Is it the thinking that they would be available year round or just during the warmer months? Just during the warmer months. Okay. okay. And then your thoughts on the concession stand? Is that only when there's events, or are you thinking about staffing that? Yep. Um, at this point, it's we've kind of built it in. We don't have any plans to actually program it at this point. Um, you know, there was actually talk also letting being used as storage at this point until you know we do get to that point. We might want to do some kind of concession. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Second question. Trustee Zor? I just had one question. Uh, you mentioned the grant possibility. Are the contractors going to hold their pricing, or for how long are they? We are under contract. So at that point, it's uh, they have to hold their they, they sh have to hold their price up until you know it's too late. I'm not sure when that final um, that drop date is. But at this point, we are under contract, so I'm hoping we're going to keep it keep it on. I'm very excited about this. So hopefully it goes through. Yes. Thanks. Alex, I did attend a couple of meetings in December before you came on. Due to financial reasons, one of the things the board was looking at was just doing a standard shelter and removing all the brickwork uh, because it was less costly. But I'm thankful that you guys have decided mm -hmm. to keep it in there because it is certainly a, a much more attractive piece and certainly complements our community and more on the part. Yes, so definitely. Please pass it on to the board. Definitely will. And then, yeah, so that, that was one add alternative that they did add on was all the brick work on the, around the columns. The um, chicken bone is going to be taken out. That was one that we did have to cut to be able to use some of this. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, public participation of agenda related items only. Would anyone care to address the board? Forgive our exodus. Sorry, what? I thought I was going to put you guys on last. <laughs> 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 Ma'am, you want to address the board? Got you, Mrs. Mississippi. Did you want to address the board? No. Okay. 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 Okay, if no one wants to address the board. Thank you. Yeah, well, the only question I was going to have is that with the bathroom from that, <coughs> just as long as you're looking at putting something like a little poop in there, because if you're going to be leaving them open and the ceramic toilet, things like that, I know that the vandal poop stuff doesn't look as pretty on something, but just dollar wise, it's better off paying for it up front. Than replacing the other stuff and having a mess for a while. That was my only thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, seeing no uh, response to that, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Amanda? The items on the consent agenda are as follows A, approval of minutes, Village Board meeting February 24, 2015, Village Board Executive Session February 24, 2015. Work session meeting March 10th, 2015. Village Board Executive Session March 10th, 2015. B Action Sewer Point Repairs Motion to Accept the Proposal of Suburban General Construction in the amount of 124470 and two to authorize the spending of 75000 from the FY1415 budget for work completed by April 30th, 2015 and an additional 41470 from the proposed FY1516 budget, and three, to authorize the village president to execute the contract document. C, action village water rate. Motion to approve an ordinance amending chapter 51.43 of the Village of LaGrange Park Municipal Code establishing water rates. D, action local government distributed funds Motion to approve a resolution opposing reduction of state collected revenues to municipalities. E, action. Motion to authorize the president and chairperson of the finance committee to sign the register for bills and authorize the treasurer and village clerk to sign checks and payment of operating bills and salaries is itemized in the check register. At action. 
section motion to authorize the village treasurer and village clerk to sign checks in the payment of payroll and other bills that become due between this date and April 28, 2015 with subsequent approval of the payroll register and voucher register by the Board of Trustees at its regular meeting to be held on April 28, 2015. All in favor of motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion second. We have all the rules. Trustee Rocco? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Cacera? Yes. Trustee Watner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Amanda. Moving on next is the village manager's report, Julia. Mr. President, I'm welcome to report this evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this evening I have a few items to report on. First of all, regarding the new refuse pricing, which becomes effective April 1st. And as a reminder on the village's contract with Allied Way for Public Services, the minimum monthly refuse charge that appears on homeowners' water bills will increase from $5.10 to $5.23. Additionally, the cost for refuse and, and, yard, and yard waste stickers will increase from $2.90 per sticker to $3 per sticker. Both changes will be effective on April 1st of 2015. For those residents that participate in Allied's Twin Toter Program, the cost for the 65-gallon refuse toter will increase to $11.94 from $11.65 and the cost for the 96-gallon refuse toter will increase to $13.99 from $13.65. The second item is regarding the Community Volunteer Day. The Village is pleased to announce that it has scheduled the annual Community Volunteer Day for Saturday, April 25th from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. During the event, community volunteers provide assistance to seniors in the community who need help with basic lawn care and spring cleanup chores. Village residents who are interested in volunteering are encouraged to get involved with this worthwhile project. Residents in need of assistance are encouraged to contact the village and to volunteer or to request assistance, call Village Hall at 354-0225 or email Andy Bagley at abagley at lagrangepark.org. Third item is regarding the Downspout Disconnection Assistant, uh, Assistance Program Survey. The village was awarded a grant from the IEPA to fund a new Downspout Disconnection Assistance Program to help residents with costs associated with disconnecting their downspouts from the village's combined sewer system. As a result, of the disconnection, water flowing into Salt Creek will be reduced and water quality will be improved. Once implemented, the village anticipates that the capacity of the combined storm sewer system will increase as much as 12% during storm events. Recently, the village updated its mandatory downspout disconnection ordinance such that single family home disconnections must be completed by January of 2017. The Downspout Disconnection Assistance Program provides incentives in the form of reimbursements to help owners meet the deadline. All reimbursements are on a first come, first serve basis. The village is actually conducting the survey to collect the data required for the program and to gain a better understanding of how individual households may be impacted by the program. We do encourage all single family homeowners to take a few minutes to complete the survey and please visit our village website at www.lagrangepark.org to take the survey or to look for the survey in the upcoming edition of Rose Days. And Mr. President, that concludes my report for this evening from the administration area. Thank you, Trustee Wagner. Okay, moving on, building and zoning committee, Trustee Sheehan. Thank you, Mr. President. The following are the building department activities for February 2015. 14 building permits were issued this past February compared to 20 in February 2014. Estimated construction costs for the month were substantially less than February of last year, while permit fees collected were also substantially less. This is attributed to the lower number of overall permits issued, and in particular, there were the three addition permits issued in February of 2014, but not issued this past February. There were 55 inspections conducted in February compared to 64 last February. Of such, seven were not approved. As you are aware, our building inspector 
was out on leave during most of February, and as such, we were utilizing our contractor, Don Morris Architects, PC, to conduct most of our inspections. As noted, February was a relatively slow month, which helped reduce the anticipated impact to our budget during such a leave. During the month, staff met with a representative of Darwin Realty, who has now been contracted to market the property located at 1201 Barnsdale Road. After many years in the Grand Park, the owner operating business at the site International Holding will be closing. The zoning and potential uses of the property were discussed along with marketing plans. Also during the month, staff met with representatives of Nazareth Academy to discuss the proposed new addition to the school. The project will include relocating various utilities. Next, moving on, Mr. President, we have a few items that need action tonight. Let's start off with Jewel Osco Temporary Retail Stand to Greenhouse. General background, each year Jewel Osco erects a seasonal greenhouse in the parking lot. Jewel is requesting to install a 1,560 square feet or 60 by 25 greenhouse that would house their seasonal flower and shrub sales. If approved, the structure would be completed in mid-April and remain in use through early July. The proposed structure is the same size as what has been allowed for the past several years. This type of structure is regulated by section 12.6 of the zoning code, which addresses temporary uses and structures. More specifically, section 12-6-C-10 regulates temporary retail stands and specifically allows for them in the commercial zoning district, but limits their size to 250 square feet. Section 12.6.8.3 also requires village board approval for those temporary uses not specifically listed. Staff recommends the approval of Jewel Osco, located at 507 West East Woodlawn, to install the temporary greenhouse structure and to approve the temporary use. Therefore, tonight, I can make a motion to approve a temporary use permit for Jewel Osco, located at 507 East Woodlawn, to allow for the construction of a 1,560 square foot temporary structure for seasonal retail sales to be occupied on or after April 1st, 2015, and to be removed no later than July 15th, 2015. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Trustee Sheehan? Thanks, Mr. President. It's a, uh, you know, you go by in the spring planting season, it's always packed over there. It's good for Jewel. It brings customers in. It's good for the tax base. There's no reason not to approve it. Any other comments? Seeing none, call the roll. Trustee Rocco? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Tessera? Yes. Trustee Lawner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll move on next to the Community Park District with Park request for temporary shed at Bobbinman Park. The Community Park District of LaGrange Park received a site, approved, site plan approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals in March to complete various improvements to Memorial Park. These improvements include the demolition and reconstruction of the shelter located at the northern end of the park. The Park District plans to demolish the existing shelter by the end of March and construct the proposed improvements, including the new shelter throughout the summer, provided the outlet funding is released by the governor. In anticipation of the construction work, the district has relocated all of their planned youth summer camps from Memorial Park to Robinson Park. The Park District is requesting to install a shed at the northeast corner of the park to house equipment used for their various youth summer camps. The proposed shed is approximately 80 square feet and will be installed after May 1st and removed no later than September 1st. In order to minimize the visual effect of the shed, it will be placed on an existing asphalt walkway with orders and existing detached garage located on the adjacent property. Section 12-4-L of the zoning code allows for the installation of the shed up to 120 square feet and 10 feet in height provided they are installed in the rear yard. Since Robinhood Park has street frontage on both 30th and 31st Street, it does not have a rear yard. The proposed location of the shed is in what would be considered an interior side yard and therefore is not typically allowed by the zoning code. Excuse me. However, since the park district is proposing to use the shed only temporarily, they are able to apply for a temporary use permit 
under section 12-6 of the zoning code. Staff's recommendation tonight recommends the approval for the temporary use permit for the community park district for installation of a shed at Robinson Park. Therefore, my action motion tonight is discussion and action. It's approved the community park district will be required to obtain a building permit prior to installing a shed. My motion is to approve a temporary use permit for the community park district for installation of a shed at Robinson Park to be installed no earlier than May 1st, 2015 and be moved no later than September 1st of this year. My motion to the second. Second. Any discussion? No, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be approved, Mr. President. Good. Amanda, call. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Amanda, call the roll, please. Mr. President. Yes. I, I do. Yes, you are there. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Um, quick question: How how will this be attached to the asphalt? Will it be just with the weight, or will it be any sort of um, anchoring? Or that is a good question. I don't know how Martin's going to figure that one out. Probably, if if it's going to be moved, I'll anchor it down. Otherwise, uh, I was going to put the anchor down in the concrete. I know that there's an area where a shed used to be previous and then you got uh, knocked down about four years ago. In the same area. Did, did I understand that it would be placed on the current asphalt plant up pad? Correct. So it would need to go into that? Yes. And in, in, in some form, so no additional pad, just in, into the asphalt and then some sort of repair or whatever probably when you remove it for the season in fact correct that is something that the building department will look at as part of the building permit review to make sure that it's properly secure thank you that, that helps clarify too thank you mr president <coughs> thank you trustee Walker. uh we had to call the roll trustee rocco yes trustee sheehan yes trustee casera yes trustee Walker. yes trustee zora yes Motion passes again. Okay, next moving on. Before I get started, are you from St. Louis tonight? Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm the uh, chairwoman for Summerfest this year. My <coughs> name is Kathy Aridia. I'm a longtime resident of Brookfield and a prisoner of St. Louis to Marillac. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks Thank you. Time. I thought you looked familiar from yeah. Mass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Moving on, noise restriction exception for St. Louis de Marlac's Carnival slash Summerfest. General background, St. Louis de Marlac is planning its fourth annual Summerfest event to take place July 16th through July 19th. The event will include carnival rides, music, food vendors, and a beer garden, and will be conducted in the same manner as it was last year. The carnival rides will be located on the St. Louis property, south of 30th Street, the stage, Food vendor, beer garden, and portable toilets will be located north of 30th Street on the Brook Park Playground. 30th Street will be closed for the duration of the event. St. Louis has obtained permission from the school district to utilize the property for the event. The specific dates and hours of the event are as follows. Thursday, July 16th, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friday, July 18th, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday, July 19th, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday, July 20th, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Village staff may approve the event as a permitted temporary use in accordance with section 153-195 of the Village Municipal Code, but cannot approve the event to operate past 9 p.m. due to village nu uh, nuisance restrictions. Sections 93-0-4 Dash C5 of the Village Municipal Code classifies all loud and discordant noises or vibrations of any kind between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. as a nuisance affecting peace and safety. The Village Municipal Code permits the Village Board to approve an exception to the nuisance restrictions for temporary uses. As such, should the Village Board approve an exception to the nuisance restrictions specific to St. Louis de Marley Carnival Summerfest, for the proposed hours of operation. Village staff will approve their temporary use application for the hours requested. Staff has recommended the Village Board grant a specific exception to the Village Board Village Noise Restriction in accordance with their authority as contained in Section 93-04-C-5 of the Municipal Code. Therefore, Mr. President, uh, make a motion to grant an exception to nuisance regulations contained in section 93-04-C-5 as amended 
of the Village Municipal Code for the purpose of allowing Carnival Rides and Amplified Music to remain operational at St. Louis the Marlite Carnival Summerfest summer on Thursday, July 16, 2015 until 10 p.m. Friday, July 17, 2015 and Saturday, July 18, 2015 until 11 p.m. Is there a motion to go to the second? Second. Uh, second, any discussion? Trustee Sheehan? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this has been a great uh, event that the church has had the last four years. I've attended, I think, almost every year except one, and everybody's had a great time um, talking with the previous chief. I don't think last year we had any uh, noise complaints, any complaints from any of the neighbors, and that's kudos to the people that are helping uh, Father Krejcik and Father Condon at the church. So I, I don't see a reason why we can't do it. Kathy, I just have one question. Yes. Looking at the diagram, is Brook Park not being utilized this year? Oh, it absolutely is. Brook, Brook Park will be housing our food vendors, the beer tent, the stage for our music entertainment, our live musical entertainment. It's the exact same setup as last year. I apologize because that was that was very last year when we had it in the part of the district and that was a lot of you guys to They've been very kind to us and, sure. and it has worked out very well. Okay, and thank you for doing all that you guys do. Thank you. Okay, um and call the roll. Trustee Racco? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Casera? Yes. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zara? Yes. The motion passes you now. And that, Mr. President, concludes my name. Thank you, Trustee Shannon. Thank you for coming. Uh, no problem. Uh, Engineering Capital Projects, Trustee Becerra. Thank you, Mr. President. I have four items to report on this evening. The 2014 Sewer Cleaning and Televising Program contractor, Bidview Sewer of Illinois, resumed work on February 2nd. They cleaned and televised all remaining contractor work except for the section of the Range Road right away. This will be done when the snow is melted enough for access to manholes, and IDOT will issue the permit. Second item, using the information obtained from the 2014 sewer cleaning and televising program, the village has developed a list of essential repairs that need to be performed on the sewer system. On March 3rd, the village will receive bids for the 2015 sewer repair program. The repair program has been structured to spend two fiscal years in order to achieve the maximum financial benefit for the village. Third item, as a reminder, the Kevin Avenue resurfacing project from 31st Street to 26th Street will apply on March 6, 2015, letting by IDOT. Construction of these improvements should commence in late spring of 2015 with completion expected by the end of the summer. Fourth and final item, project plans and specifications are being completed for the village's 2015 paving programs. Similar to the approach taken last year, we anticipate this work will be performed under two separate contracts. The first contract will use revenue funds for the resurfacing of Cleveland Avenue from 30th to 26th Street. This arrangement is advantageous to the village due to the poor condition of the pavement and the ability for the project to move forward quickly. The second contract will follow using a combination of revenue funds and motor fuel tax funds. The use of MFT funds requires significant involvement by IDOT and adds considerable amount of time before construction can begin. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Trustee Casera. Uh, next is Public Safety Trustee Rocco will give that report. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the, this report, the total kind of crimes reported for the first two months are similar to last year with 27 thus far in 2015 compared to 25 in 2014. Overall, police activity is approximately 22% lower with 907 incidents handled by the police this year compared to 1156 during January and February of 2014. The primary reason for the lower number is due to the police department not responding to basic ambulance assistance at Bethlehem Woods. Chief Rockman has been awarded an alumni scholarship for future use and police staff and command training for police administrators from Northwestern University. The award covers all tuition and fees for any future class. Additionally, this award is given to past graduates who have been promoted to chief of police. The Board of Police Fire Commissioners approved their meeting on February 22, 2015. The promotion of Detective Timothy Thompson to Sergeant Effective March 24, and we know this morning this evening. Congratulations. Detective mm -hmm. uh, joined the Police Department in 2002 and served in the Patrol, Patrol Investigation Section of the Department. He also presently serves as an OIC 
when the sergeant is off duty. Additionally, he serves as a juvenile coordinator for the department. The Board of Police and Fire Commission also approved the appointment of David Escamilla, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, as a probationary officer. David is 26 years of age. He has a bachelor's degree in business administration from San Xavier University in Chicago, Illinois. He will be attending the Basic Law Enforcement Academy at Triton College in conjunction with the Cook County Sheriff's Department from April 6th through June 12th, 2015. Any fire department report? Any questions? Um, and the EMS responses for this month are 104. There have been 259 years to date compared to 261 years to date in 2014. Fire rescue is in a state of 32. There have been 70 years to date compared to 138 years to date in 2014. Fire department personnel, along with our police and personnel from the Brookfield Fire Department, participated in a basketball game against Mighty Patriots, the Park Junior High Special Olympics team. Due to uh, winter weather and blizzard warnings, uh, fire departments are staffed, were staffed um, from Saturday evening, 1.31, 9 p.m. through Monday morning, 2 2 to 6 a.m. A final fire alarm system was test was conducted at 1202 Community, the home owned by Healthy Hand. During the month, much CPR and AED training was conducted. EMS staff provided such to fire, police, and village staff. They also provided CPR and AED training to students at Nazareth Academy. Four of our personnel were awarded EMS Run of the Month by the Adventist LaGrange Hospital EMS Department for the care they provided to an elderly resident suffering a stroke. These personnel were paramedic firefighters Shelly Carbone and Brian Whitman, Division Chief Paramedic John Carpenter, and Lieutenant EMT Pat Hurley. Three of our paid on call firefighters resigned during the month. One moved to the city of Chicago, one could not meet attendance requirements due to other job and life situations, and one was forced by his full-time employer, a nearby village with a full-time union fire department. This is all quite unfortunate, but it's something one puts still with time to die when dealing traveling with a paid out call, call fire department. Our fire department candidates continue with fire academy training throughout the month, both in the classroom and in the field. During one weekend, they were able to use a home in Western Springs. The Fire Department Foundation Appreciation Dinner took place, and during such time, the Western Springs Fire Department stepped up Fire Station 1 with an engine and crew. And there is one item of action on the President um, in the fire. And it pertains to the purchase of fire hose and adapters. And the fire hose is a critical component for all fire related incidents to adequately and safely get water to a fire for extinguishment. A great deal of planning over the years takes place regarding hose from the sizes and lengths we need to the way it's packed on fire apparatus, which is all tied into our operations to handle a variety of fires and emergencies in an efficient manner. The proper design and use of the hose is fairly simple, but maybe not as simple as one may assume. There are various hydraulic calculations made, which take into consideration the amount of water needed to be flowed on specific sizes of fires, the loss of flow caused by friction loss of water moving through the hose, to the required pressures needed to overcome such. Also, fire holes must be inspected and pressure tested annually to ensure will function as designed without failure. This budget year, the fire department had two capital projects related to both budgeted. One was a planned upgrade of four inch to five inch hose, our large diameter hose, or LDH, or the replacement of all four inch hose, and the other was a biannual general ongoing hose replacement program. Our project related to our LDH four inch and or five inch hose was based on the projected need to replace our four inch supply hose due to the age and wear of it over time. As a hose ages, many lengths are taken out of service as they tend to develop many pinhole leaks and sometimes bulges prior to rupturing. NFPA 1962, the National Fire Protection Standard, which addresses the maintenance of fire hose, does not require all fire hose to be placed at a certain age, but it does note that some limited testing indicates hose over 10 years in age is subject to increased risk of failure and the standard does not does state that fire departments should be a careful consideration to a maximum 10 year service life for fire hose. The majority of our LDH is older than that. For this project, the fire department staff was also anticipating potentially upgrading the size of the hose from four inch to five inch at this time, as five inch hose provides much better flow dynamics related to friction loss. There are though additional weight and size storage concerns and the fire department operational concerns related to our water system staffing. After much conversation with senior staff and additional research regarding the use of four inch versus five inch supply hose, it was decided that our current operations are performed adequately with four inch hose and a cost benefit analysis to move to five inch hose does not warrant such. 
Our other budgeted project related to our biannual ongoing loans replacement program takes into account replacing any holes that is not considered large diameter. The intent of this program is to replace holes which have been damaged over the years are showing significant wear or are substantial in age. In addition to the actual holes purchases, we have also, also have the need from time to time to update and or to add to our hose adapters, which are necessar necessary to connect the hoses in various configurations to one another, to fire hydrants, and fire apparatus. And we will see a significant cost savings by staying with our four inch fire holes. And we will not be spending the full amount budgeted for our ongoing replacement program this year. We would like to purchase the adapters at this time. This purchase will add to our supplies so each of our fire apparatus has the same size of adapters and will also allow us to replace old heavier adapters with ones manufactured with new lightweight materials. As such, a request was sent to close off the vendors to provide quotations on the equipment we needed to purchase. The following is a summary of the quotes received. It should be noted that we had $40,430 budgeted in the capital projects fund between the two programs this fiscal year. There were three, uh, as I said, three uh, requests or responses. Air One American, um, there was a bid of $20,912.60. Paul Conway, at 21116 Illinois Fire Stock of $21,698.95. The specific quantities and text quotes of gas factors are located on the submitted quotation sheet, which can be found in your uh, packet. Um, the recommendation is that, uh, which based on the review of quotes and quotes and research conducted on the product specified, the manufacturer such. The um, fire uh, chief recommends that the purchase of all items be made from Air One equipment located in South Elgin, Illinois. They are also the company who provided the lowest proposal. In addition, the chief has confirmed the sales representative there will be no charge for freight, which can be significant based on the weight of the hose. So I move to approve the purchase of the fire hose and adapters at a total cost of $20,912.60 from Air One Equipment Incorporated located in South Elgin, Illinois. Second. Uh, motion and second discussion, Trustee Michael. Um, it only seems to make sense for safety reasons for us to update. Um, it's, it's wonderful that the uh, the amount is um, almost half of, well, we have about half, almost half of what we budgeted, so that's fantastic. Um, and is it all due to the, uh, to the <coughs> reducing it from five inch to four inch, or is it just? Um. Not all of it. There's a significant savings by going from the five inch down to the four inch. Um, but we probably over budgeted. To be honest. That's but if we were estimating probably early on in the year 2000 with the adapters and the five inch, because once you hit the five inch, there's a lot more adapters that have to be changed. But we have a number that we're not replacing that are already adequate with the four inch. Perfect. Great work. Thank you very much. We need savings. Thank you, Trustee Rackham. Any other comments from the board? Seeing none, Amanda, would you call the roll? Trustee Rackham? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Casera? Yes. Trustee Lawner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. And that concludes the Public Safety Committee report, Mr. President, all action items. Thank you. Thank you again, Trustee Rackham. Moving on, Public Works Committee, Trustee Sheehan. Thank you, Mr. President. The following is the monthly, monthly report for Public Works Department for February of this year. For the Public Works operations, 194 regular hours and 234 overtime hours were spent on winter operations, which required either salting, snow plowing, or both. There was a total of 972 miles salted with approximately 210 tons of salt and 1,824 miles plowed. <coughs> 274 regular hours were spent on the maintenance of public works equipment and vehicles. 45 hours were spent filling potholes and approximately three and a half tons of asphalt were used. 329 day shift hours were spent on the building and ground maintenance around the public works facility and along 31st Street. Various work orders were completed with work crews removing roadkill and making sign repairs. There was maintenance, uh, mechanical maintenance on various public works vehicles and equipment, police, fire, and uh, building department uh, vehicle required some maintenance. Water department operation, over 220 day shift hours and 104 overtime man hours during the month of February were spent on maintenance and repairs of sewer and water mains. 
34,220,000 gallons of water were purchased from the Brookfield North Riverside Water Commission. 1,524 water meters were read in section two. 50 monthly accounts and nine final meter readings were taken. Various inspections, appointments, and service calls were performed. 15 water bacterial samples were taken and all samples passed. 40 utility locations were identified prior to activation. One water main and two service lines were repaired. Two buffalo boxes were also uh, repaired. That concludes my report, Mr. President, and also the winter of 2015 snow, I hope. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Sheena. Finance Committee, Trustee Rocco. Thank you, Mr. President. We have now completed 10 twelfths or 83 percent of the fiscal year. This fiscal year, this is year to date, general fund revenues are at 78 percent of the annual budget. Revenues are approximately 1.2 million below this time last year, due to the timing of property tax receipts. The village receives most of the first installment of property taxes in February and March each year. Sales tax revenue continues on a positive trend is up about 9% from last year. Fiscal year to date, natural gas taxes are also higher than the prior year. Telecommunications tax receipts are over 18% lower than last year, including the reduction due to a nationwide debt appendix lawsuit settlement. If we exclude that type of reduction, telecom tax receipts are lower by about 10%. Permit revenue is up over 12% from last year and at 163% of the annual budget as construction and improvement activity continues at a strong pace. Intergovernmental revenue is slightly higher than last year due to increases in the state shared use tax. Income tax receipts are also rebounded this past month as February payment was over 24% higher than last year. Fine revenue, revenue is about 13% lower than the prior year, yet still within budget. All departments are within their, within their expected fiscal year to state budgets. Police department expenditures are greater than last year due to a tiny difference in the pension contribution. The public works department expenditures are higher than last year due in part to planned increases in tree trimming and street materials. Total general fund expenditures are within budget of expectations at 80% of the annual budget and about 1.63 million above last year. Most of the increase is due to the approximately 1.2 million budget and transfer of cash reserves to the capital projects fund. Excluding the capital transfer and pension timing differences, General fund expenditures are approximately 200,000, or about 3.7 percent above last year at this time. And at this time, Mr. Uh, President, I would like to turn over the mic to our uh, Director of Finance, as he would like to share with us, as you see in your packet, um, the uh, sheets regarding the cash investments uh, and the investment schedule. Thank you, Trustee. Um, not much to, to really say. <laughs> except that this schedule is intended to provide a more complete picture of the village's fund at the end of the month. It includes both the cash in the bank and the investments that have been on the regular schedule uh, in the past, as well as to provide a uh, simple way to see how the ratio between our cash and investment has changed over the year. And if uh, there are any questions, I can answer any questions from the board. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Uh, I guess the, the, the main question that gets me is just a, a little bit of your perspective as to what, why the drop between February 20, 2014 and 2015 went from 3.389 million down to 332. You're looking at the old investment schedule? Yeah, that was, well, that's the February 28, yeah. 2015. Showing this year, February 28 mm -hmm. versus last year. That's actually one of the reasons uh, for the new design of the investment schedule, this, this schedule we're in, yeah. is to show that the, the, the change between the cash and the investments. If you look at the new schedule, you actually see that the overall total cash investment has changed from about 6.8 million to 6.1, which is reflective of the investment in infrastructure over the last year with the million dollar transfer. So you, you see the picture when we add the cash do the investments a little better than we do with just looking at the investments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. And it's thank you, Trustee Long. Any other comments? Trustee Rocco? Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Um, you know, I just hit up um like I was just trying to compare the two. So uh, even with the old there, you know, looking at the general fund, it says uh, cash is uh two million, maybe this is the same question. Um two million uh 
four dollars. And then on the um, old format, it has two million seventy-three thousand fifty-one. Now, is that supposed to be? They're both is it February twenty-eighth. I was just wondering why the discrepancy there. The old investment schedule included both the CDs and also money that was at the only funds, which, while it's technically an investment pool, it's really the same as the cash you put on. We can get that money at any time. So I've included it in the cash column rather than the investment column on your schedule. So if you subtract that Illinois funds in the general fund, the first 1.7 million, from that 2.73 million, uh -huh. uh, 73 million they would equal the same 1.45 million in CDs. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you, Mr. Norman. And thank you very much, Mr. President. And thank you, Trustee Marco. Okay, moving on. Uh, other reports go first? No report, Mr. President. Board Treasurer John Peter, Board Treasurer No report, Mr. President. Board Treasurer Attorney? Uh, no report, Mr. President. Any further report a motion to approve as reported? So Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, I have a couple items. First is the uh, amendment to the appointment agreement. Uh, the village board met in the executive session, reviewed the performance of the village manager following the completion of third full year of employment with the village of the Green Park, and determined that an adjustment to the employment agreement was warranted. Included with this memorandum is an amendment to the employment agreement consistent with the village board's determination. The amendment includes one change and adjustments and adjustment to the annual salary. At this time, I would entertain a motion. So, uh, motion, 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 mo motion to authorize the village president to execute the amendment to employment agreement. A second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? May I call the roll? Trustee Rocco? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Cacera? Yes. Trustee Lawler? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, next item is the appointment of uh, John Mazzelli to the Sustainability Commission. Consistent with the membership provision of the Sustainability Commission Charter document, the Sustainability Commission shall consist of seven voting members, all of whom shall be appointed by the village president with the advice and consent of the village board. Today, there's one vacancy on the Sustainability Commission due to the resignation of Commission Member John Akins. The village must appoint a member to the commission with a term to expire on May 1st, 2016. We have spoken to Mr. Buzzelli regarding the work and progress of this Sustainability Commission and he is eager to dedicate his time in serving in this advisory group. His application is attached, we reviewed and considered it now in a motion. Mr. President, I'd like to move to appoint John Bazzelli to the Ad Hoc Sustainability Commission for a term to expire on May 1st of 2016. Second. A motion to second any discussion. See none of the roll. roll. Trustee Rocco? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Casera? Yes. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Amanda. Next up is a proclamation for Arbor Day, whereas an 1872 Sterling Warren proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, Whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce light giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. Whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. Whereas trees in the Bridge Park increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source, source of joy and spiritual renewal. Therefore, be it proclaimed that it goes with great heart, proclaims Friday, April 24th, 2015, as our today. Okay, next up I have a report. Um, if everybody saw it, really sent out a memo about the Mobito ranks, uh, ranked the Grange Park at number seven in the top 10 Chicago suburbs. 
This week as National Online Real Estate Brokerage and Referral Site, Bogota identified the Grange Park as one of its 10 best Chicago suburbs. The Grange Park is ranked seven, tying with Western Springs. In its online article, Bogota writes, the village of the Grange Park has a new something for everyone. If you're a lover of the outdoors, the Grange Park has you covered with over 24 acres of parkland, nearby forest preserves, and the Salt Creek Park Trail. More into shopping, there are literally tens of businesses for you to enjoy. Okay, so amenities aren't exactly a strong point. <laughs> they were good up till then. They had the fourth fewest per capita, but it more than makes up for this. It's a close-knit community feel. It's safety and award-winning public and private schools, like Lyons Township High School in Nazareth Academy. A resident can read uh, the link on the, uh, the article from the village's website's homepage. Okay, next I have, uh, you've all received a letter that was sent to Governor Rana, Representative Walsh, Representative Gleski, Representative Ford, Senator Lightford, and Senator Landa. Um, local government to sturdy upon don't penalize City Hall for its good stewardship. All of us know that sacrifice and health decisions come during hard times, but so do common sense, logic, and reason. The state is dealing with a massive budgetary mess of its own making made through years and years of putting off pension payments and borrowing and spending beyond its limits, none of which is the fault of local governments or their elected officials. In fact, during the same time, municipal governments balance their budgets every year, provided for the health, safety, and welfare of their residents, invested in infrastructure improvements, and were able to do all of that under the pressure of property tax limitations, declining revenues, unfunded state mandates, and pension benefit sweeteners sent out from the Capitol building. Now is not the time to penalize our city hall for good stewardship of the local share of increased state income taxes. Why should our hometown suffer the drastic cuts being proposed by local governments when they didn't create the problem? Based on the numbers reported, a 50% cut in the municipal share of income taxes would result in a reduction of $672,160.50 to my community. The water would propose property tax freeze and likelihood of more unfunded mandates from the state how are our elected leaders supposed to find the dollars to pay for critical local services? We have already made the tough decisions that we are already operating efficiently and effectively, especially when compared to the state. We balance our budget every year and watch each dollar to make sure it is returned to the local taxpayers through quality programs and services. When these cuts are passed down to the local level, the message being sent is, thanks for doing the right thing, now you have to pay again for our mistakes. Please take a stand against the unnecessary and unrealistic cuts that have been proposed for its local governments. This is not a case of don't cut my pet program. This is a case of common sense government. Thank you for your support. Uh, and here's my signature. Um, I did receive an update today that House Bill 317 and 318 was passed today by the House. Um, and while despite the indications that the fix would include stripping between 25 million to 30 million from the local government distributed fund, uh, they decided not to decrease the distributions for the remaining of the fiscal year, which goes up to July 30th. So that was very nice of them. Uh, new budget comes into effect July 1st, so we're not done with the battle yet. Uh, coming up next. Um, this gentleman does not like to be singled out, but I will. Um, Chief Magus uh, recently participated in the St. Baldur's fundraiser for the child of cancer, as you can see. Um, and one other individual did to the department, I think. I'm sorry? Did another individual in the department participate? Uh, yes. Rick Gronowski and the fire chief of the drain. So it was three fire chiefs. Thank you, Chief, for representing our community. Uh, we will go back. <laughs> My last minute decision. <laughs> it was a good decision. And I think the ribbons that are up throughout our community have, as a result of Rebecca, I see. Because they're going up all over the place. So. Okay, uh, committee assignments and the process of working on committee assignments, the board will get those shortly. Um, I will make note to Alex Lopp, but Alex, uh, the executive director of the Park District, will be joining us on our drive down on uh, April 29th with the West Central News Province to Springfield. And that's all that I have. So now we will have public participation. Of non agenda related items only, would anyone care to get the board? Seeing none, oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, can you sit you up in your new Barry Avenue for Grange Park? Um, I guess the best thing I can do is explain to you why I am here and then what I'm asking for. Um, I have been a teacher for many years. I'm an avid book reader. I've taught reading, love reading, and 
feel that literacy is a very, very important thing for every community. Following this thought, I found last summer um, there was an organization called LittleLendingLibrary.org. You go on site and you either get um, you buy a little wooden library, and what you do is it goes in your front yard, and there's a sign on the top of it. it the saying is, "Take a book, um, leave a book." And um, I ordered one of these, and we had put one up in our front yard. The response to it was really, really great. The turnover of books is uh, there's nothing I put in there anymore. I mean, it's just books that neighbors have come and taken and put their own books in. And that changed. I mean, I check like every week to watch to see, and there's different books all the time. So it is being utilized um, until we found out that there might be a zoning issue with this being placed in the front yard. So what I'm asking is for you to change your language, the zoning language, that this type of, I wouldn't even say it's a house because it's not, it's probably about this wide, you know, about this tall with a wooden door with a glass in certain front, um, that this would be allowed to be um, used in our village. Um, it is a, it might be is, um, it, they're all over the country. There are thousands and thousands, not only in the United States, but also in Europe. They can't even pin the places on the map anymore. They have to put up a new map on the computer or on the website because there's so many people to put these up. So um, I don't see any really negative things about this. I just see a lot of positive things and a lot of good response from people about, you know, who are interested in this and happy to have it and are enjoying it. And I also have um, a little article that was in the newspaper that this summer, the village of LaGrange, how every year, you know, they do like either the cows on parades or they take a seat down the seat where they have the different art, people sponsoring different things with the cows. And, and then at the end of September, they auction them off and the money goes to charity. Well, this year, it's going to be a prototype for the Little Lending Library. So they're going to be decorated by different businesses, put up, displayed downtown the range, and at the end of the summer, auctioned off. So, um, you know, I have, have a registered Little Lending Library. Um, mine is registered through that organization. Um, I don't know if, if everybody has to have it um, uh, registered. This is just how. I found out about it and went through everything I had to do to get it on the map. We are located on the map. We have a number and um, everything is done that way. It's just now, you know, it's really hard for me to take that down um, out of the front yard. So um, I have a picture of the prototype that the range is going to be using. So if you'd like to look at that, what I'm asking is for um, just for, I don't know how you do this, but for you to look at the language for zoning to have something like this be placed in your front yard if you'd like to have one. Because it's a benefit to the community and I don't see any negative, negative about it. Okay? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Julia, we'll get in touch with you. Well, you know, there was a little debate in our household about it coming down when we when I first heard the new news. And of course, um, Mr. President there was like, "Okay, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down." And I said, "Wait, I need to talk to Julia first. <laughs> to talk to you. you know, so um, it's down now. I really would like to put it up, back up. So." I'll leave that up to you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Good job. <laughs> All the mails are good. Um, any other comments from the board of business? Trustee Rocco? Yes, Mr. President. I should think of the opportunity uh, when it was up for motion, but I just want to take this opportunity now to say um, 
how fortunate we are that for our village man manager to have Julia today was our village manager. Um, our, as anyone who works in, within the village knows that we are very fortunate um, to have her in our community, to have her running the show. And we are very lucky and fortunate and happy that you're still staying with us. Thank you. Trustee Wagner. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. That was not put in the form of a motion, but I'll second it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And I will go on record. <laughs> Our community is in the position it is today, 2015, as a result of hardworking people. And her staff and all the hardworking individuals that make this board look so good. There's a lot of new programs that we're instituting. There's a lot of work that's being done with flooding, our streets, with all the department heads that are working so closely with Julie and her staff. Um, it's just a privilege and a pleasure to have this group with us and represent our village because you are doing such a phenomenal job. Thank you. Thank you. The privilege is mine. It truly is. Thank you. Okay, motion. Uh, I'd like to welcome Trustee Zora to the board. <laughs> 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 and I want to again thank you for being here for the professionalism and broadcasting our board uh, meeting. With that, the motion to adjourn. Okay. So move, Mr. President. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.